Hello, in this video segment we are going to run through the initial configuration of our previously unboxed 1783 NetR module. So NAT, N-A-T, stands for Network Address Translation and it allows you to change one IP address to another for means of communications across multiple networks. This NetR also has the ability to translate up to 32 different addresses but it only allows 10 total ports of communications. There are five default ports, which are the ICMP for pinging, port 80, which is HTTP, which is the web, port 443, which is HTTPS, which is secure web, port 222, which is used for IO traffic for Allen Bradley equipment, and port 44818, which is for class three communications on Allen Bradley equipment. With firmware version 1.002 and above on the NatR module, you also have the ability to add up to five additional ports, such as port 5900 for VNC or port 3389 for remote desktop. So we are now going to power up and configure our module. Now we have powered up our NatR and we have plugged our PLC into the, one of the private ports and I've plugged my laptop into the other private port of the NatR module. Now the NatR module works as a layer 3 NAT device, which means the gateway address of the physical device, which is our PLC in this scenario, needs to be the IP address of the local port on our NatR module. So we start by powering up our switch. By default, our DIP switch setup is off, on, off, and this will assign a temporary IP address to the NatR, which is 192.168.1.1. We are gonna also verify that our computer is within that same network. So we're gonna go onto our computer, go to our ethernet port, hit our details, and if it is not in the network, we need to go to into the properties and give it an IP address that's in the same network as our NatR module. So click OK. So now our laptop is set up in the same network as the NatR module. To access the module, we need to open up a web page which we can do now. And then we type in the IP address of the NatR, which is 192.168.1.1. To get to the configuration, we're gonna hit configuration on the left-hand side, and we're gonna check our private IP address. The default username is admin, all lowercase, and the password is the serial number, uh, which you can find here on the web interface or it is also on the side of the NatR module. So A007 D4EA. We're going to sign in. On your very first sign in, you will, all, you will always be prompted to enter a new password. So for ours, we're just going to use admin again, just because it's simple enough for our scenario. We're going to click apply changes. Uh, if you ever forget what the password is, the easiest way to get this back is to use the dip switches to factory reset and bring you back to that initial configuration. So now that that configuration has been done, we're going to go under the configuration tab on the left hand side and we're going to check the public network. Again, it will prompt us for our username, which is admin, and our new password, which is also admin. Sign in. And now we have the ability to change the IP address of the NatR. So we are going to enter in 10.10.10.2 as our desired IP address of the NatR. 
and we're going to click apply changes. So you get this prompt uh, letting you know that the network configuration is changing and it may cause a disruption in your connection. You just press OK. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the uh, private network tab. And this is where the IP address is for the local ports. Right now we are accessing it through the 192.168.1.1, which is default. Uh, but we are going to change that to dot .2. Uh, just so we could show that you would need to make that change and to set up the configuration of our PLC. Again, a key note here is in order for the translations to occur, the physical device must be, must use the gateway of the IP of the NATR module. So now that we've changed the IP address, we're going to select OK. At this point, we want to cycle power to our NATR device to ensure that it took the configuration changes for both the public and the private ports. We will wait for it to power up. So as it passes through all of its checks, we have a green status for OK and both of my local link statuses are on. We now need to type in the new IP address to access the configuration. So right here we can verify that our public IP address is 10.10.10.2 uh, .10 and that our private IP address is 192.168.1.2. So lastly, the last thing we need to configure is our network address translations. So since we cycled power on the equipment, it will ask for our username and password again. We type that in. Um, by default, we need to verify that the NAT enable is enabled. So it should be by default. If it is not, there's a drop down to enable that. Then you have the ability to add new, which is an individual rule, or add a new range. So we are going to enter a new single translation. So it is going to ask, what is the IP address that we want to translate to? So we have an IP address of 10.10.10.11 is where we want to move our PLC. But our PLC is currently at 192.168.1.11. And you can give it a description. Uh, typically, I leave my demonstrations generic, but in a real manufacturing environment, you would want to make this as descriptive as possible to help you later on. Uh, so for our scenario, it's just going to be PLC. And we want to make sure that this enabled box is on, saying that you want this translation to work. So we're going to add the rule. At this point, we now have the PLC being translated in the NATR module. So the one thing we are going to do is we are going to go to Factory Talk Links browser and we should be able to see on the local network our PLC. And we also see the NATR. So on the PLC, I'm going to right click. We're going to go to Device Configuration and we are going to validate and verify that our gateway address is the proper gateway. So the gateway was the original IP address, but since we changed it, we now need to change the, I, the gateway address inside our PLC. I'm going to click Apply. Now, you can make the gateway changes while online with the PLC. It will not or affect the communications of the PLC if this is a running system. So now that we have the translation done and we verified that the physical device, our PLC, its gateway address is now the IP address of the NATR module. We now need to take our PC and change it to the 10.10.10 uh, .10 network and verify that we are able to see the PLC through the public port. So we will unplug plug our PC into the public port. Now we need to go back to our PC. 
and we need to change our configuration of the PC to be on that public domain. Okay, we have quickly created a new driver and now we should be able to browse through and we should see the public address of the NATR as well as in square brackets you see the local or private side address and then the same thing for our PLC so we see that our PLC is 10.10.10.11 but the physical address is the 192.168.111 so at this point we have set up the proper configuration to allow the translation of the PLC through our 1783 NATR module.